course, what Moog synthesizer demonstration would be complete without an examination of the incredible Bob Moog ladder filter. The ladder filter found on the Mini Moog is maybe the most definitive filter ever found on a synthesizer, the most desired filter, the most imitated, copied filter. Even though Bob, uh, you know, patented his filter back in 1967 and that patent was awarded in 1969, uh, people just waited <laughs> until that patent ran out so that everyone could have this incredible filter sound. So in this Mini Moog demonstration, here we go. We are going to dig into the incredible filter found on the Moog Mini Moog. The filter. A little bit of history. This filter, it was based on a filter architecture that did exist. The low pass filter did exist. But Bob Moog made his own version of it, and his version was unique enough to earn a patent. Uh, he applied for a patent in 1967. He got the patent in 1969. It was one of the defining factors of his modular synthesizers because they had this character that was beautiful. There were other modular synthesizers. They did not have that character. So they were capable of synthesis, but there was something about the Moog that always sounded good, and it was this filter, although this is a modified version. Uh, but the concept, the ladder filter existed, but Bob Moog took the ladder filter and he built it his own way and resulted in something truly, truly beautiful and wonderful. And uh, luckily, that filter was put into this synthesizer which is, you know, I always tell everyone, like, it's not just the filter. The Mini Moog has other things going for it that, that contribute to its remarkable and recognizable sound. But the filter does play a large role because the filter is just so great. Um, so uh, here is the Moog filter. If you're not familiar with filters, the way it works is that, as we talked about, uh, Oscillator output, these waveforms, a sawtooth waveform, for example, has a huge amount of harmonics, which are little sine waves at different frequencies and amplitudes. And their arrangement uh, makes the timbre that we hear, instead of a bunch of different sine wave notes, we hear a sawtooth wave. And what the filter does is it carves away harmonics out of that sound, eventually reducing the waveform to a sine wave once all of the harmonics have been carved out. But as it carves uh, harmonics out, the timbre of the sawtooth wave changes. And uh, that's desirable, both in a static way, finding an amount of harmonics for a sound to exist that has a certain timbre, or uh, progressively removing harmonics to create the ever famous filter sweep as we call it. But in any case, let's have a listen. I'm just gonna play a note. We're just going to turn the cutoff frequency and this controls the point at which the harmonics are removed in the spectrum of the waveform. <laughs> You'll notice the sound is completely erased, and that is because this is a 24 decibel per octave slope, which means the cutoff line is very up and down, meaning no harmonics are gonna squeak by. They're all getting cut off. If you had a 12 decibel per octave, the slope is a little at more of an angle, so even when you've turned it all the way down, you could still feel, you can still hear a few harmonics sneaking through. But in this case, they're all gone, and that steep filter cutoff line is another factor that defines this ladder filter sound. And whatever is happening in the oscillators, in the mixer, and in the filter itself is resulting in that incredibly warm, thick, dare I say fat filter sound. It's so beautiful. It's, uh, it's hard to even <laughs> just, you could sit there and do that this all day. Every time I do it, I'm like, Oh, that sounds nice. One of the ways
ways that you know that we are carving out harmonics and that we're going from high to low is the sound starts off bright and then it gets darker and dimmer. There are other types of filters, high pass filter, which would do the opposite. All the low end would go away or band pass, both the high and the low would go away depending on where you had the filter cutoff frequency. But right now we're focusing on this type of filter, which is the low pass, which consecutively allows low frequencies through as it carves away the high frequencies. Until the very bottom when even the low frequencies are carved away. Now, uh, it's so pleasing. You could just do it all day. Anyway, so let us talk about, oh, and earlier, you know, we talked about the triangle wave. Uh, not having a whole lot of uh, high frequencies and therefore not being really great for filtering. You can hear something happening there. But it's very subtle because the triangle wave has so few harmonics that when their presence is, their presence is not very noticeable and when it's carved away, it's not very noticeable. Anyway, so we have also emphasis. Now, what is emphasis? Emphasis is the first name attributed to this function, emphasis. That's what Bob Moog called it. Uh, his synthesizers were the first to feature it. And uh, weirdly, there were, there were several other terms that kind of came up. Other companies used different terms, uh, but resonance became the term that stuck. Um, God, I'm trying to remember the other one. Someone else probably remembers. Uh, but in addition to emphasis, uh, resonance, which it is, it's a, it's, a, it's a resonation that is happening. And what resonance slash emphasis does is, okay, you know, we keep talking about, we've been talking about how in the oscillator, the sawtooth wave is made up of a lot of very quiet harmonics that are so barely audible that they come off as timbre instead of individual notes. Well, what resonance does is at the filter cutoff point, it takes the harmonic that you're currently set to and it boosts it so it becomes its own note. So it's just a sine wave at a certain frequency that's in the sound, but the resonance pushes that sine wave in amplitude. It makes it louder and louder and louder until it sticks out. And in that process, it creates a unique and desirable timbre. It also creates the outcome where if you want to play the filter like an oscillator, you can do it because the filter, because the resonance has boosted that filter sine wave, the filter cutoff the sine wave at the filter cutoff point to the point of audibility. So then all of the other you know, oscillators might be carved out, but that ringing wave shape is there and you can play it like notes, which we will talk about. Anyway, let's have a, a, a sense of the resonant sound. So As I turn it up, you can hear the sound, the timbre of the note changing. And if I turn it enough, you'll start to hear the whine of that harmonic that we're boosting into audibility. Audibility. Oh, it's too high. There it is. As I shift the filter cutoff, since the resonance is the sine wave at the filter cutoff boosted into audibility, uh, as I change the filter cutoff, it's focusing on a different harmonic that it's boosting into being able to be heard. So we, uh, we hear a sine wave happening above the, the sound of, that is being produced by the oscillators. <laughs> 
But if we back it off, it just creates a unique timbre because there is a boost in that harmonic and maybe others that are right there at the filter cutoff. So it gives it that kind of wow, wow sound that wasn't there before. Which like was the most such it's such a pleasing sound that it's not surprising that that became like the whole pursuit of filters, especially in a in a simplified synthesizer such as this. Like that sound is such a desirable sound that everyone's like, I want a synthesizer so I can make that weird cat meow sound. <laughs> And that's just basically what happened. And that's how this came about. It was through resonance at this point called emphasis. And uh, that's that super desirable sound. And it probably uh, sh it doesn't, I don't know, it should be obvious that because the Mini Moog sounds so good, that particular effect took on a desirable element because it sounds more delicious than it would sound in other synthesizers with a similar architecture because of the tone of the Mini Moog, which is a delight. <laughs> Thank you.